All right, hello everyone. Welcome back for more biotechnology. So up until this point in the chapter, we have gotten kind of the basics down on what all the components of a solution are. So let's talk about, practically speaking, how you're gonna be making solutions in the lab from scratch. So let's start with making solutions according to the mass volume format of keeping track of concentration. So this is going to be the metric for concentration that we're typically going to use for very large solutes, usually talking about protein solutions, things that really aren't going to be uh, practical to express in terms of moles. We're not talking about things like sodium chloride or glucose or anything like that. We're going to be talking about usually whole proteins here. So we'll be keeping track of concentrations of proteins and other sorts of things in terms of grams per liter, grams per milliliter, mg per mil, or micrograms per microliter. So consider an example like this. You've got a 10 gram per milliliter solution of insulin. We've talked about insulin before, right? So what that concentration means is that every one milliliter of solution contains 10 grams of insulin. So if you had 10 milliliters of this solution, you would have a total of 100 grams. So if you're making a mass volume solution from scratch, you've got a pretty easy job ahead of you. All it's really going to involve is weighing out uh, a certain amount of solute, a certain mass of solute, and then adding the volume of solvent up to the desired total volume, provided you get the concentration just right. So in the picture to the far right, you see 10 grams of protein solute being dissolved in 10 milliliters of solvent. So that means we're gonna end up with a one gram per milliliter solution, 10 grams in a total of 10 milliliters, one gram per milliliter. So that's if you're making a solution from scratch, but when we're talking about proteins, usually in the biotech application process of making and purifying proteins, whatever solution of protein you get, it's what you get. You don't really have a say in what the concentration is, so you're going to need to determine what the concentration is of your unknown solution. And when we get to chapter seven, we'll cover the sorts of methods you would use to go about doing that. So when you're working with mass volume, you're going to probably want to use this very simple equation here uh, in order to determine what mass of solute you are going to weigh out and dissolve in your desired volume of solvent. So for this example, let's say that you want to make a 0.05 gram per milliliter hemoglobin solution. How are you gonna go about doing it? Well, uh, what you would do is consider that, okay, if I want to make 100 milliliters, I'll just multiply the 100 milliliters, my desired volume, times the desired concentration, and multiplying that out gives us five grams of hemoglobin. So in that case, you would just weigh out five grams of hemoglobin and then dissolve it in solvent enough to get you up to a total of 100 milliliters. So there, every milliliter would contain 0 0.05 grams per milliliter for a total of five grams in 100 milliliters. Okay, so look at this example. And for this example, this example looks an awful lot like the previous one, but you have to pay attention to the units here. This time it says, imagine you are going to make a 0 0.05 milligram per milliliter hemoglobin solution. So this is different from the solution we made before because the one from before was 0 0.05 grams per milliliter. So 0 0.05 grams per milliliter is the same as 50 milligrams per milliliter. This time we're dealing with 0 0.05 milligrams per milliliter or 50 micrograms per milliliter. So a perfect example of why you have to be very, very careful about paying attention to the units. So we can again ask the same sort of questions here. How much hemoglobin are we going to need to weigh out? So like I said, 0 0.05 milligrams per milliliter is the same as 50 micrograms per milliliter. So if we want 100 milliliters, we're going to need 5,000 micrograms or 5 milligrams. And we would take that 5 milligrams and dissolve it in 100 milliliters of solvent. Now, to be clear here, when you're working with an analytical balance, 
five milligrams is really at the bottom range of what you can realistically and accurately measure. So if you're going to want to make a solution that is at an even lower concentration, you're probably going to want to make a more concentrated solution and, and then dilute it down later. And the last section in this chapter is going to deal with how you would want to do that. Okay, so now let's talk about using percent concentrations. So as we said, some solutions will use percentages to denote the concentration of solute. So 20% PEG or 5% sodium chloride. So percentages are going to work the same here as how they do anywhere else. So percentages just refer to fractions out of 100. So 20% is the same as 20 over 100. 5% is the same as 5 over 100. So the idea here is that whatever the solute percentage is, it represents that particular percentage of the whole solution. So for example, a 5% sodium chloride solution would contain five parts sodium chloride out of a total of 100 parts of solution, which would be 95 parts solvent. 4% mass volume solutions, you can do this either mass volume or volume volume if your solute is a liquid too, for mass volume solutions, the percentage is given as grams of solute per 100 milliliters of solution. So to make a 5% sodium chloride solution, you would just weigh out 5 grams of sodium chloride and dissolve it in enough uh, distilled and deionized water to make 100 milliliters so that you've got 5 grams of sodium chloride per 100 milliliters of solution. Okay, so for another example, how would you go about making 45 milliliters of a 20% PEG or polyethylene glycol solution? So 20%, if we kind of start things here the way that we normally would, a 20% PEG solution would be equivalent to 20 grams of PEG per 100 milliliters solution. Well, we don't want 100 milliliters. We want 45 milliliters. So to figure out how much PEG we need to weigh out, we need to do a quick calculation. So we know our concentration can be expressed as 20 grams of PEG per 100 milliliters of solution. That's the 20% aspect here. So we can multiply that times the uh, volume of solution that we actually want. So here you can see that milliliters of solution should cancel out in the numerator and the denominator, leaving just grams of PEG as our only unit here. Doing this calculation will give us a total of 9 grams of PEG that we would dissolve in enough water to make 45 milliliters of solution. So something to remember is that a percent solution can be conveniently expressed in terms of grams of solute per 100 milliliters of solution, but you should just keep in mind that you're not always going to want to make exactly 100 milliliters of solution, but it can be very useful to think in terms of grams per 100 milliliters. Okay, so now let's start talking about moles. This is something that in our first, or excuse me, our second video, we definitely said that we were going to mention. So a mole, you might be wondering what the heck a mole is. A mole is just another measure of solute abundance. How much solute do we have? However, it would be probably more accurate to say it's actually counting the number of solute particles or molecules more so than anything else. It takes into consideration that not every molecule or particle weighs exactly the same. A molecule of glucose is going to weigh a little bit different than a molecule of uh, some other sugar like fructose, so we take that into consideration. So. For example, 10 grams of sodium chloride and 10 grams of glucose will contain very different numbers of actual solute particles even though they have the same mass. So a mole ends up being kind of an arbitrary figure, kind of like how a, if you have a dozen of something, you've got 12 of something. If you've got a gross of something, you've got 144 of something. So you could have 12 eggs, a dozen eggs, but that's not going to weigh exactly the same as a dozen feathers or a dozen dumbbells, but you still have 12 of each one. So a mole is defined as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. For a given substance, if you've got that many particles on hand, you've got exactly one mole. 
So therefore, a mole of glucose would contain exactly 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd individual glucose molecules altogether. So this 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is called Avogadro's number. So moles are going to be useful for us when we're dealing with chemical reactions taking place in solution because molecules do not react according to mass. They react according to the mole ratios, the number of particles participating in the reaction. And since individual particles end up being too small and too insignificant in order to measure or weigh, we work with moles. We can't weigh out one glucose molecule, but we can weigh out a mole of glucose because we know there are 6.022 times 20, 10 to the 23rd molecules there. So when you're working with moles, you need to be aware of what the molecular weight or formula weight of a particular substance is. This is going to tell you how many grams of your solute is equivalent to one mole of that solute. So for example, glucose's molecular weight is 180.12 grams per mole. If you've got 180.12 grams of glucose, you've got one mole and therefore 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd glucose molecules. For sodium chloride, its formula weight is 58.5 grams per mole. If you've got 58.5 grams of sodium chloride, you've got one mole of it. So molecular weight is something that we use for molecules like glucose that are not altered by being added to a aqueous solution. Formula weight is something that we use for salts like sodium chloride that dissociate into sodium and chloride ions when they're added to water. So regardless, the molecular weight or formula weight for a molecule or compound can be determined if you take a look at the periodic table of the elements, as you can see over here on the right side of the screen. So this table actually will tell you the molar mass for each one of the elements that are listed. So for example, hydrogen up here in the top left has a molar mass of 1.01, .01, meaning one mole of hydrogen atoms will weigh 1.01 .01 gram. One mole of oxygen atoms over here, number eight, one mole of oxygen atoms will weigh 16 grams. So in order to determine the molecular or formula weight for a molecular compound, you just have to add together the molar masses of all of the elements that are a part of that particular molecule or compound. So for sodium chloride, every sodium chloride unit contains one sodium and one chloride. So we would just add together sodium, which is 23.0 grams per mole, and chloride, which is 35.5. If you add those together, you get 58.5 grams per mole. If we do the same thing for glucose, which has a much more complex structure, it actually has a total of 24 atoms in it, we're just going to count up the mass of each atom. So if each mole of carbon atoms is 12 grams per mole, we would multiply that by six because we've got six carbon atoms. If each hydrogen atom is 1.01, .01, we'll multiply that by 12 because we've got 12 of them and we'll do the same thing for oxygen. So if you do all that and add them all together, you end up with 180.12 grams per mole, which we already established is glucose's molecular weight. So let's get some practice with this. How many moles are in 150 grams of sodium chloride? So we can use our dimensional analysis here as well. So we know that in one mole of sodium chloride, there is 58.5 grams. So if we multiply this conversion factor times our 150 grams, you'll notice that grams will cancel out, leaving us with just a unit of moles of sodium chloride, which in this case is 2.56. So 150 grams of sodium chloride contains 2.56 moles of sodium chloride. Okay, next question. How much does 10.5 moles of glucose weigh in terms of kilograms? We can do the same thing here. We can figure out the molecular weight of glucose is 180.12 grams per mole and multiply it times 10.5 moles. So the moles here cancels out, leaving just grams. But we don't want grams, we want kilograms. 
So this gives us 1,891.3 grams, but we need to convert to kilograms. So we're going to multiply by the conversion factor that we laid out back in part one of this video series. One kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams. So here you can see that grams will now cancel out and leave us with just units of kilograms. So 10.5 moles of glucose will weigh 1.8913 kilograms. And finally, what is the formula weight of hydrochloric acid, or HCl? So one mole of hydrogen atoms is 1.01, one mole of chloride atoms is 35.5, and since hydrochloric acid contains one of each, we would just add those two numbers together, which would give us 36.51 grams per mole for hydrochloric acid. So the reason we're talking about all this is to render us capable of discussing this new concentration unit called molarity. Molarity is a measure of concentration that uses units of moles of solute per liter of solution. So if you take a 5M, which is read as five molar solution of sodium chloride, if you were going to make that, you would just weigh out five moles of sodium chloride, which you would figure is 292.5 grams, and then you would dissolve it in enough solvent for one liter of solution, so five moles per liter of solution. Or if you don't want to make a whole liter, if you need to make a smaller volume, consider a question like this. How much sodium chloride should be weighed out to make 100 milliliters of a 5 molar sodium chloride solution? So here we would take our molarity, which is 5 molar or 5 moles per liter, multiply it by our desired volume, which is 100 milliliters. So keep in mind, we have to use 0.1 liters here in order to get the units of liters to cancel out. And then we would multiply by the conversion factor of 58.5 grams per mole, which we've already established is the formula weight for sodium chloride. If you check your units here, moles will cancel out. So moles and moles, liters and liters cancel out. The only, excuse me, the only uh, unit that is left over is grams of sodium chloride, in which case we would have 29.25 grams. Another question, how much calcium chloride in milligrams should be weighed out to make 200 milliliters of a 50 millimolar solution? So this is a little bit more complex than what we've been working with. This is going to require multiple steps. So if our concentration that we want to make for our solution is 50 millimolars per liter, that's the same as millimolar, 50 millimolars per liter, we would... Uh, work our way back to molar, so we would multiply by one mole over 1,000 millimoles because uh, a milli refers to a 1,000th, so that will cause millimoles to cancel out and leave us with units of moles per liter. Then multiply by our desired volume, which is 200 milliliters or 0 0.2 liters. That now cancels out liters, leaving us with just moles. And now we will multiply times the formula weight for calcium chloride, which if you do it on your own, you should get about 111.1 grams. So now moles cancels out and our unit that is left over is just, 100, is just a grams of calcium chloride. But we want to know milligrams, so we would do another conversion of milligrams to uh, grams to milligrams. Grams now cancels out and leaves us finally with our answer of 1,111 milligrams of calcium chloride. So if you are going to make 200 milliliters of a 50 millimolar calcium chloride solution, you would weigh out 1,111 milligrams of calcium chloride and dissolve it in enough water to get you up to 200 milliliters. So finally, now that we've talked about molarity, let's talk about two related measures that you're probably not going to really need, but you should know what they are. 
Formality. Formality is sometimes but not often used to represent the concentration of things that have a formula weight, like sodium chloride and calcium chloride. It's the same concept as molarity. It's still dealing with moles per liter, practically, except it implies that the final solution does not actually contain the indicated solute at that concentration. So, for example, when you dissolve sodium chloride into water, that five molar solution that we mentioned before does not actually contain five moles of sodium chloride in solution. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound, it's a salt. So when you dissolve a salt in water, it dissociates or breaks up into its constituent ions in solution. So what you've really got is a solution that contains sodium and chloride ions. Really, you've got a solution that contains five molar sodium and five molar chloride ions. Once the salt is dissolved, there really no longer is any sodium chloride anymore. It's just the individual ions. So to eliminate this confusion, sometimes you'll see salt solutions listed in formal terms rather than molar terms to make sure that that is clear. So it would be more accurate to call this a 5F or 5 formal solution of sodium chloride, but hardly anyone ever sticks to this, and you're likely going to just see the molarity term used instead. But just be aware that just because something is 5 molar or is listed as 5 molar does not mean that there are actually 5 moles per liter of that particular solute in solution. Normality is the exact same concept, just applied to strong acids and strong bases rather than salts. So if you're talking about a nine molar hydrochloric acid solution, that wouldn't be really accurate because the solution actually just contains individual hydrogen and chloride ions, not any actual hydrochloric acid. Those ions break up in solution. So it would be more accurate to say the solution is nine in or nine normal hydrochloric acid rather than nine molar. But the same deal with formality, most people are a little bit lazy with their designation, so you're more likely to just see 9 molar hydrochloric acid. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and join us next time and we will start talking about the pH scale, which is a necessary discussion for us to have considering our solvent in any solution is usually going to be water. So thank you for your attention and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.